Hey, sick boy from the Gaming Antics Collective, and I've just sat through what is it, two hours and six minutes worth of a bit of a wanky nightmare, which has finally been the Sony announcement for the PS4. So I've got a breakdown of the information, hopefully most of the pertinent information you're going to need, so you don't have to sit through that live stream, because dear Christ, it went on forever. Okay, right. First things first, PS4 has definitely been announced, so there was nothing... It wasn't like a, a big build-up for nothing. They have announced the PS4. They have announced it's going to be a holiday 2013 release. So it is coming this year, probably released towards the end of November. So it'll be a Christmas launch, uh, which will probably look for the uh, the Wii U. will probably decimate it come launch sales, but we'll see what happens. Okay, um, they did a lot of talking about ecosystem, about the gaming ecosystem. There's a lot of talk about how this is going to be about a connective experience and linking, and it was a lot of information about linking the Vita to the PS4 and mobile phones and tablets and stuff. So I'm just going to go over some of the technical specs here that I've just written down. I haven't gone into too much detail of the actual processes and things because, to be honest, that's going to all be available, and I didn't really want to bore the arts people who don't really want to hear about these things, but I'll give you the, the gist of the information here. Hang on. So, obviously, uh, they will be using the Vita, and they'll be using it, as as with the Wii U gamepad, they'll be using it as a second screen, so it will allow you to stream games from your PS4 directly onto your Vita. Okay, so that's something that we really hope they were doing with the PS3, but they've been holding off for the PS4. Right, um, there will be integrated tablet um, and phone functionality, as with, as essentially, marks of smart glass. Um, and they'll also allow for live streaming, and I'll cover more of that in a minute. Um, okay, they've stopped using the cell technology, which was the main reason that the PlayStation 3 has such massive porting issues, because they have their specific architecture, their specific processor, now they're going for essentially a more PC-centered architecture. Now, from what they've shown, it is not going to compete well against high-end gaming PCs. That is not what they're going for here. They're going for the fully integrated multimedia experience. Uh, and that's where they're looking, it seems, to trump the PC. They're not going to trump the PC on power. So anyone who'd been guessing that, that's dead wrong. And I think a lot of people had rightly guessed that the PCs will still be the power players with regards to graphical power and with regards to the cutting edge of actual gaming technology. This is much more, they're trying to differentiate themselves from the PCs to make it much more of an entertainment system rather than something you play games on as well as other things. So, right. So, um, they have shown, they've now announced the controller. The controller picture that was leaked the other day uh, has been confirmed to actually be the PlayStation 4 controller. So, the G Shock 4 has been confirmed. Um, people have made some guesses. So, a lot of the guesses that people have made over the last few days have been pretty accurate. We have got um, the trigger buttons do look more like the Xbox 360. They're much uh, slimmer and more sort of angled, which is kind of good because although the PlayStation did a good job with the dual um, trigger buttons originally, they have been eclipsed and they are a bit fiddly and crappy. And I don't like playing FPSs on the PlayStation 3 compared to the Xbox because of that, because I don't think the trigger feel as good. So the triggers do look more like the Xbox has done, which I think is probably a good step in their direction. Right, the front bit there is definitely has been confirmed as a touchpad. That's definitely been confirmed, as is the microphone jack. Finally, they're actually having an integrated microphone jack for um, sound. They're having colour-coordinated player, um, much with the, as the Wii has the little button to know which player you are, on the back is going to be a colour-coordinated light that will show who is which player. Um, now there's also going to be a light stereo camera which is going to come with the PlayStation 4 which is essentially going to be an eye toy type thing there's going to be move technology within the controller itself so it's going to detect the location and the position of the controller so rather than using gyroscopic technology they're going to use stereoscopic technology utilizing a camera built in well built in either built in or separate they haven't really announced it looks like it's going to be a separate periphery that needs to sit on top of or beneath your TV that's going to detect the motion of the controller for you uh, the other thing they've put in is they're making a big deal of it is the share button, and I'll cover more of that in a second. So they um, they have made there has been a confirmation that they will be utilising move controllers, whether it will be exactly the same move controllers or whether they'll do a new generation. Hopefully, they'll do what the Wii have done and allow things to be carried on to the next generation. Um, there has been uh, they have included um, one thing I think is really good here. Um, which I think is genuinely a terrific thing, 
and it's something that a console, of all things, have needed for a long time, is a suspend, resume, play functionality. That means in mid-game, this doesn't mean you have to save or do anything. Literally, you can press a button, turns off, it puts the console to sleep, it saves precisely where you are in the game, you press the button, it comes back, you're exactly where you were. So for those of us who have grown up with consoles, or those of you who you know still are, um, still are teenagers living at home with the consoles and people compl you know, they complain to you to turn it off, turn it off, go, I can't, I'm not at a save point, and you leave it there for days on end and people got, you know, with the Xbox is what caused a lot of red ring of death of people leaving their console on for God knows how long. There is now a suspend button that literally saves your progress instantly, freeze captures your progress and shuts the machine down. So that, I think, is a good bit of functionality. Uh, they have saying that they're going to use the streaming game uh, Streaming games which have been previously leaked, and they will be saying that they will allow you to essentially stream games initially uh, with a tiny download, and then as the whole game downloads, allow you to stream the game, um, which is handy for people who want to play digital games. Um, now, there will be integrated uh, ways of uploading clips, so the last few minutes of your gameplay, say, will be stored on these small. Um, small video files in your cache, allowing you to access them and instantly share them online. Which again is quite nice if you discover a glitch or something you're particularly proud of, um, you want to share a bit of gameplay, they'll allow you to do that. Which is nice. Uh, that's going to be live streaming both on PS4. Now there's live streaming integrated in, so anyone on your PSN friends list that appears will be allowed to live stream your gameplay session. Not only that, that will be allowed to be done on tablets and on the PlayStation 4. They will also integrate essentially what they've called a, a game directorship, where people can watch you, they can make comments, either trolling you, as your mates may do, or making helpful tips. They can take control of your game. I don't know whether you, they have to own the game to do that, I'm not sure, because that potentially opens the, open, will open the door to one person having a game and everyone having a go, which I can't see happening. But uh, so maybe there'll be some kind of limitations on that, and also uh, item drops. Again, I don't know whether these are going to be earned, but it means that someone in your playlist can, for example, drop ammo or drop a health pack or something. Those are the examples that they used. I don't know whether these have to be earned as perks as you play the game in order to give out gifts to your friends. Presumably, that's down to the individual developers. But that is something. Uh, and that is, obviously, they're looking to take these things out of uh, the, the realm of people doing Let's Plays and what have you. They want to try and integrate that directly into the PlayStation 4. Right. Um, so that's all been through the share button. The share button something they're making a very big deal about. This new share button that's going to be on the side of the analog, on, on the side of the D, near the side of the D-pad. And that's going to be the instant share what I'm doing. So presumably it's not going to be a constantly sharing thing. You have to choose whether you share your gameplay session, which is handy because if you're doing ter really badly, you don't really want to have your mates watch you just get absolutely pasted by a certain boss or level. So, you know, that's good news. Um, one thing that really, really, they count it as a big thing, and really got in my, you know, they keep talking about personalised content personalised adverts, personalised game suggestions. What they're doing is basically they're using adware built into the system and they're talking about predicting what games you'd like, what adverts you'd like to see and in some cases pre-loading games that they think you're going to want to buy. Which for convenience sake I see why they're doing it for a convenience thing but personally as a consumer, as someone who values his privacy that is a bit worrying. Not only that, but they, they, they alluded to the fact that the PlayStation ID will in, will integrate with Facebook and things like that. And they mention about real names and making things personal. And they haven't confirmed it, but it does suggest that it's going to be a real name system. So the days of PSN ID handles is going to be a thing of the past and it's going to be your name from what I can tell. I don't know whether they'll still allow you to use handles but they were mentioning very much about the personally integrated social networking experience. They're looking to essentially make a Facebook for gaming uh, with, their, with the PSN. Which make of that what you will. They have confirmed as well that the PlayStation Plus subscription service will continue. Um, They've also stated that the PSN will allow people to self-publish games. So that is pretty much the information 
with regards to the actual tech itself and what it's going to do. Lots and lots of pushing on social gaming. Um, it, if you're a sort of person who likes your single player games and doesn't really want to make your gaming a social experience, it looks like the PlayStation 4 is going to preclude you with pretty much everything. Everything is built around social communal gaming. That's uh, that's one for you to make what you think about yourself. Right. Um, another two bits I want to go over to. Games, some games have been announced. Um, first one is uh, Knack, which looks... Uh, they didn't say anything about it. They, they showed a demo of it. It looks like, it looks like a Pixar film. Um, and it looks like they're basically a small little robot who can integrate different bits of the environment into increase and decrease his mass. They showed as part of this, they, just before this, they showed a, a tech demo in the Havoc engine where they showed a, a million objects all falling from the sky and bouncing off all the things. So they're utilising particle physics to um, increase the size and the, uh, and the composition of the character in the game. And that's going to be, it looks like it's going to be a, an action platformer. Um, that seems to be an in-house um, in-house Sony issue. So that is potentially an exclusive. They didn't confirm it as an exclusive, but it was announced by the person who was actually responsible for the PlayStation's architecture. So I can very much assume that this is going to be a PS4 uh, exclusive. They announced a new Killzone game called Shadowfall, um, which looks, uh, from the demo they showed, it's one of the few games that actually had an in-game demo. It showed a Hellgast Invasion, Looks like it's probably going to be a prequel um, for those of you who are old hats at the, the Kill Zone and played it in the PS2 days. Will know that Hell um, that that Kill Zone One started during the Hellgan Hellgust invasion, and it was that was the whole kind of like looked a bit like a World War Two in a weird sci-fi world, and then it went off and into Hellgan as it did in two and three. So this looks either like it's going to be a separate invasion or it's going to be a return to the initial roots of the story that weren't really covered much in the original games. Um, suffice to say, all of these games looked beautiful. It's ridiculous to say they're not. This is all next-gen technology. Of course it looks good. They all look good. So, Drive Club. Uh, this is going to be a... Um, again, it's a very socially based and it's a driving game. It's a first-person driving game. They've mapped... It seems like they've mapped absolutely hundreds of cars to the nth degree. It did look incredible. They were mentioning that they even have a... a a direction to the fibers inside the interior that there is a certain sheen on the when you wax the car that the carbon fiber reflects the light that it has realistic lamp shades not just so that the actual halogen lamps or wherever lamps are being utilized in the particular car has realistic lighting effects uh, and the whole thing is about you setting challenges having a driving club getting together saying right at this time I want so many people to race this road fastest wins or fastest team score wins and you get to set that so it's going to be a very social experience as are a lot of these games um, next one an infamous game so another PSN it's another PS4 exclusive um, Drive Club hasn't been as far as I'm aware didn't seem like a confirmation of an exclusive obviously Killzone clearly is Nat clearly is infamous clearly is so I don't know about Drive Club they didn't actually say directly uh, but infamous second son it's it's Seems like they've got a completely new protagonist, and it's a very uh, anti sort of 1984 style surveillance society, anarchic, angry young man smashing the shit out of police and stuff. Um, now, the guys who made Braid have announced the the game The Witness, which has been highly sought after, which is an open world puzzler. Uh, they've announced that this is going to be a launch PS4 exclusive. So it is coming to other platforms, but initially it's PS4 only. Right, after they did that, they moved on to allow the publishers to have spots. And there's some interesting news here, and there's some pretty wanky news from the developers, uh, publishers. Right, first off, Capcom. Capcom did pretty much sod all. They announced they have a new, they have a new engine. It's a uh, codename, was it the Panto Ray? And they announced that they have got a new IP coming. Uh, it looks like it looks very Dragon's Dogma-ish. It's a Western-style RPG with dragons in, and that's codenamed uh, Deep Down. So that is coming. Um, Square Enix, Square Enix, 
made themselves look like complete and utter pricks, to be honest. They came out, they showed something that I'm sure I've seen in a previous tech demo. Um, people with, uh, people, sort of monk people with lightning magic against people with assault rifles and a dragon and a weird steroided up wolf thing. Uh, and that, then they came out and then they brought out the, the head of Final Fantasy, who came out and said, watch E3. For a Final Fantasy announcement, so no shit. There's a Final Fantasy announcement. It's E3. We've been waiting for verses for what feels like a hundred bloody years. Of course, there's a fucking announcement coming at E3. They could have given us something. Thanks, Squeenix. That was really dickish. Um, they were probably the dicks of the night, to be honest. Um, Ubisoft. Ubisoft came out and they showed some more watchdogs. They actually showed some more gameplay. I don't know what you guys were looking at. I originally. Everyone confused it with Sleeping Dogs because the name is very similar and it looks has that kind of parkour, third-person, open-world thing. Um, but it looks much more like Assassin's Creed mixed with the Capcom upcoming game Remember Me. It's lots of hacking of mobile phones and things. I mean, they've, I've seen the demo before where they're showing people changing the lights. They showed a lot more of that. They showed popping up bollards, uh, a little bit of bullet time taking out uh, tyres, um, some... Parkour chase, a parkour chase scene, stalking people and hacking their mobile phones. Um, looks interesting, and I'm sure that's going to be up by the time this video is. Um, Blizzard. This was an interesting one. Blizzard came out and they've announced they've actually come into a, a strategic partnership with Sony, which again means Microsoft aren't getting this, but they are bringing Diablo 3, not only to the PlayStation 4, but to the PlayStation 3. They've said that they've they've streamlined a lot of the issues and taken all the kinks out of it. I bloody well hope if they're going to do it, they doesn't have all the online DRM because we know what an absolute fucking cluster fuck that was for the PC gamers. Jesus Christ! They have announced as well. They have confirmed four-player local co-op, which allows you all to play on the same screen. And apparently, people then leave the dungeon if they want. It then translates to a split-screen environment, so there's no being locked in the same screen as your teammates. So. Could be interesting. Also, uh, quite a kick, giving quite a kicking to Microsoft, really. Um, and then the last one of the day was Activision. Activision came out and they brought some more. Now, people were talking about Bungie coming out and doing the whole thing about Destiny and it being a big coup for Microsoft. And they announced it essentially being multi-plat. Um, Sony have really undercut Microsoft on this uh, because... Bungie came out at the behest of Activision. They showed some in-game footage, not very much, but they showed in-game footage of Destiny. Um, they announced that it will be both PS3 and PS4, and there will be exclusive PlayStation content. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be exclusive X uh, Xbox 720 content, but they have announced that. Which does go some way to think. We've been I've been thinking before about what is going to be Activision's next focus. I mean, they've already got the they've already got the sort of the, the kiddie market with Skylanders, and they've got everyone else, including kids, with Call of Duty. What were they going to next? Uh, I was ex you know I was half expecting them to come out with some kind of Call of Duty based announcement, but they've gone with Destiny. They are backing Destiny, which looks to me like they are going to the more integrating rather than having a little a short campaign and a multiplayer mode having this persistent online customizable fps so that looks like that is what they're looking for for perhaps the future of activision um with regards to fps is if that's the case they have said about the one game lasting for some time so expect shitloads of dlc i doubt this is going to be a single purchase game with, with free to play and no upgrades there's going to be a way they're going to make their money because with regards to Activision and Shooters, of course, they bring out a COD every year and that makes them absolute fortunes. They probably will still keep supporting COD for as long as it's profitable, of course, but they are looking for what is the next big thing. So, a lot of things they didn't mention. They didn't openly deny any rumours that were circulating out there. They didn't deny anything with regards to the used game blocks. They didn't talk... It was all very digital based. They didn't talk anything about the disc players. We know there is going to be a disc player, of course. Um, so, that's it. I tried to condense that down as quick as quickly as I could because, well, what is it? It's 20 to 2 in the morning for me here. I've sat there for over two hours to watch that stream. And I want to get that pertinent information out there for you guys. So, 
What do you guys think of it? Is there anything particularly exciting there? The only big bombshell seemed to seem to really be a PC exclusive from almost a year ago. There wasn't much in the way of groundbreaking, um, and Screenix were dicks. Um, looked impressive. Did look impressive. The uh, the going for this sharing route may be something that Microsoft haven't gone all in for, so it may be a way to differentiate the two consoles in the future. So, anyway. That's right, guys. I'm going to make a move now. I think I'm going to go to bed before I just have myself a quick vodka with the distress of sitting there through that. Jesus Christ. I would strongly recommend, do not, if you haven't watched it already, do not watch that live stream. Pick up the demo, uh, pick up the demo videos, which are going to already be online by now. That was a wanky, wanky two-hour press conference. But, upside is, we've now got some information for going on with. So, anyway guys, catch you later.